All right. If I can just get Wicked Boston for a hot second. I was out walking. It's snowing where I am. You know, I had to go get that Dunks in the morning. Uh, just real quick. I'm not sponsored by Dunks, but, you know, Dunks get at me. Uh, so please ignore the, <laughs> the rosy red cheeks and the wet hair. It was from the snow. Uh, but that being said, let's talk about Bone Prison. Back in the June quarterly update, we got a quick look into some of the skills that the Necromancer was going to have, and then in the press release beta, we got access to the Codex of Power. Not only were we able to see the Codex of Power for the three classes we were able to play, which was the Barbarian, the Sorceress, and the Rogue, but we were also able to see the Codex of Power for the Necromancer and the Druid as well. So if you haven't seen my first video, we covered Bone Spirit and everything that I think Bone Spirit is going to do based off what it says right here, and then based off of the different legendary aspects that are available in the Codex of Power. Since we only see one other Bone skill get used, and that's Bone Prison, I figured we'd cover that here, but just as a quick refresher. Bone skills in general are supposed to deal physical damage, they're supposed to rely very heavily on having a lot of essence, which is the necromancer's mana, and critical strike chance to be able to get the maximum benefit out of these skills. Now, with Bone Prison falling under these same paradigms, it's kind of interesting, right? Bone Prison, at least from Diablo 2, made a little circle of bone around an area. Great for trolling your friends in bail waves and generally annoying people in PvP before they have access to teleport. And other than for people like me who use it in pacifist runs and for abusing different monster AI mechanics, doesn't really do altogether that much. So what could they possibly be doing to Bone Prison in Diablo 4 that keeps it within this bone skill paradigm and also makes it a useful skill. So in their description of Bone Prison, we get an idea of the very least what the developers expect the use of Bone Prison to be. One of the first things I wanted to point out was that they specifically call out you slamming your weapon into the ground. The Rogue and the Barbarian, it's pretty easy to see how their skill damage is directly tied to their weapon speed because the faster that they can attack, the faster they can use attack-based skills. For the Sorceress, it was a little less cut and dry. There are definitely some attacks that use the animation of your weapon and seem to get faster when you had a faster weapon speed. But then there were other skills that generally just looked like they had their own animation. So my first guess here is that maybe Bone Prison is also based off of your actual weapon speed for how quickly you can drop the skill. The second part seems like it makes a lot of sense, but it does call out something very important. So you're going to create a bone wall in a circle either around a target or an area. So this means that you can just put down a bone prison proactively in an area. And as we see in the gameplay here, you'll notice that at least inside of dungeons, the passages really aren't that big and bone prison takes up a vast majority of that space. This is actually very interesting because I can't assume you're just gonna be able to spam this. I feel like they would have shown us the necromancer dropping multiple bone prisons in a row just to kind of highlight that. So since you're able to restrict whole sections of a dungeon pathway, this actually could already be really useful as an overall AOE crowd control effect, as well as some of those similar situations like I use in D2 for manipulating monster AI for them to either waste a certain attack pattern, possibly hold off an elite monster before it uses one of its special abilities, or stop particular minions from being able to be near other minions just in case they have some type of synergy. The next part that they call out, which again I think just gives us some insight into what the developers are thinking, is the idea that this can be combined with many other skills, even those outside of the bone tree. Now I think we can look at bone prison as two separate things. Is it thematically within the bone skill paradigm where you're going to be able to somehow benefit from having a lot of essence and critically striking a lot? Or is it specifically a tool which could benefit from that, but otherwise you're able to pick when you're actually themed in some other way, either around darkness or blood or some type of heavy minion summoning setup? Maybe Bone Prison is just a tool that can get socketed into many different builds as opposed to needing to be used in a bone build itself. And then just kind of the entire last section goes into what we have already talked about and theorized. This idea that Bone Prison can be used in many different ways, not just necessarily trapping a singular monster, but in many different tactical situations where you otherwise might not be able to actually apply that much CC to as many monsters, so you need to section them off, etc. Also, since we know that Bone Spirit itself is going to deal damage in an AoE, they specifically call out the fact that you can section off a group of monsters to all keep them within the same range, 
so that your AoE effects are more effective and are able to hit more targets more easily. Now, again, I don't think we've really touched on anything that you weren't expecting. Bone Prison does what Bone Prison does. Make a circle of bone, monsters gotta hit it before they can come get you. It's when you look at the codex of power entries where I think Bone Prison gets a lot more interesting and has the potential to be applied to a ton of additional builds and playstyle variants that you otherwise might have not have thought of. Now, the two Codex of Power entries, I think, both directly and perhaps indirectly relate to Bone Prison and what it could bring to your arsenal are these two right here. So we start off with Bursting Bones. This says when a segment of Bone Prison is either destroyed or expires, it's going to deal a small amount of damage in an area around it. Now, when I say a small amount of damage here, obviously we don't know the higher end of this. The Codex of Power always rolls as the lowest possible value of whatever that legendary aspect is. Considering the amount of damage I was able to do on the Barbarian in the press release beta, by the time I hit 25, 48 was a very small number. But there's two things of note here which are really important to check out. One, it differentiates between being destroyed and expiring. So we already know here that Bone Prison is going to have a set duration that it's on the field. Again, similar to Diablo 2, which is good. If it was just kind of there permanently until a monster decided to walk by, you might even block yourself off from an area. So while it makes sense, it's good to see that validated. But if Bone Prison is going to be able to deal damage in an AoE around it, especially after expiring as opposed to being destroyed, this potentially has a lot of different applications. One, you could proactively cast Bone Prison into an area where you know a monster is either going to move or going to spawn from. We saw a lot of different dungeon bosses in the press release beta with a ton of different mechanics that spanned a lot of different ways that you might have to interact with the battlefield to be able to fight them. So if I could proactively drop a bone prison knowing it's not going to actually stop the boss, but the boss is going to move to that area, then when they show up and they do their AoE, they blow up my bone prison. And while it may only be 50 damage here, 60 damage there, getting an entire ring of bone prison, depending on how many segments, might add up to a lot of damage. Not only that, you have to remember that there are at least two major factors to what happens when damage is dealt. One, there's something called lucky hit. Lucky hit is a percent chance per skill that when it deals damage or when you use it, your lucky hit affixes can roll. So lucky hit can say, increase your resource generation or increase your damage dealt for a certain amount of time, trigger different damage skills or set off other passive skills that you have. So if the bone prison's damage can actually activate your lucky hit, even though again, it's a small amount of damage, it might be able to set off a lot of different passives and auxiliary skill types that you have to gain even additional benefits. The second part, and this is how it ties into our second Codex of Power, which is Torment, is whether or not this damage can critically strike. If the damage being dealt is based off of your character, there's no reason for me to believe that it can't crit. If it can crit, then every time that a piece of Bone Prison is either shattered or expires and deals damage in an AoE, you have multiple opportunities to trigger critting, which has multiple opportunities to trigger increasing your essence regeneration. The reason why that's so important is that Bone Skills in particular require you to often have a vast majority of essence available, or even your maximum essence available. So if throwing down a Bone Prison not only gives you some CC capability, but also the off chance of critting, which is just passively generating you more essence, you're able to perform at your maximum potential and cast even higher damage bone spirits than you otherwise would normally be able to without using the skill at all. Now, please keep in mind, a lot of that is conjecture and I'm just putting the puzzle pieces together how I see them. And I'm trying to approach this game thinking a bit more outside of how Diablo 2 might have you understand Diablo mechanics in general. And I'm looking more at the example of something like Path of Exile. In Path of Exile, the name of the game is basically manipulating your skills and adding different passives and using different atlas progression to be able to tweak your build to do very specific things so that all of their trigger words line up and get you the biggest benefit possible. So depending on what Bone Prison says, what its enhancements or additional rank ups get you, what other legendary aspects you'll be able to find in the world and other unique item aspects that you'll be able to get, and then exactly how damage dealt versus lucky hit and critical strike all kind of meld together to create a single game mechanic. Mechanic. There's a world where using Bone Spirit almost is irrelevant for its CC potential, but instead is being used to trigger all these mini passive skill bonuses so that you're kind of weaving in
putting it into your skill rotation proactively and getting a bunch of incremental damage and power increase so that you can steamroll through a dungeon or other open world content. The other thing about Bone Prison is that it is a crowd control effect. You need to be able to stack crowd control effects on dungeon bosses to be able to stagger them. Staggering them makes it so that they're vulnerable, they're going to take increased damage, it can interrupt their big skill effects, as well as just incapacitating a dungeon monster for an amount of time so you can stack on a lot of damage. While not necessarily as explosive as Bone Spirit, I'm happy to see Bone Prison make a return to the Diablo franchise in Diablo 4. I've always loved that skill on the Necromancer. I have all these incredibly visceral memories of sitting in bail runs on my Necromancer, all my skeletons running everywhere, me in full tranks because I didn't know any better, and just spamming Bone Prison whenever I could because, eh, why not? I'm also excited to see what the rest of the Necromancer's skills look like. And I will continue on with the other skills that were in the quarterly update. So if you've been enjoying these potential deep dives into what the skills of the Necromancer might look like, please let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you all. Thank you again so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.